Politicians know it's always going to be some kind of sin. The, the whole field is, people, ask, people will ask the question, can you be eternally secure? And yes, if you're spiritually mature. But the only problem is that is not you're not uh, spiritually mature until you are like him. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible talks about us growing up or growing to the full measure of the statue of Christ, growing up into him. Mm -hmm. So until you reach that point, you are not like him. You are not the perfect man. But that, there is that point that you get there. Yeah. But in him, we are. In him. <clears throat> That's why the Bible talks about Christ in you. Yeah. That's why we have to dwell in him, and he has to dwell in us. So, But there's a whole lot of controversy on, and, and again, these are controversial subjects anyway. Controversial subjects anyway. Because from the Calvinist. Right. Uh, a lot of them come from Calvin. Yeah, a lot of us Calvinistic, and you have people. You have people in all denominations and organizations who are either Arminianist or Calvinist. Now, I will I will say those two terms are not in the Bible, uh, but they're concepts uh, that we all understand what they are. Okay, so uh, we'll we'll go with that. You said well, that what they call tool. Yeah, that was it. Total depravity. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so glad to see everybody here today. How's everybody doing? Doing good. Okay, all right. Well, Deacon Harris, you want to open us up with a prayer? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yeah. oh you want to stand up? No, I, I, I feel better standing up. He's interested in the position of your heart. <laughs> right. well, go ahead. Gracious Father, this is in the name of Jesus. We thank you again for the opportunity to come and to learn more of your heavenly power in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, a lot of times when we look at the Bible, we have a hard time separating the shadow from the image. Okay, we have a tr uh, trouble separating the spirit of the law from the letter of the law. And a lot of times we're so caught up in the letter of the law that we miss the spirit of the law. And that's one of the uh, uh, downfalls of the uh, Pharisees. They were so caught up in the letter of the law, that they actually miss the spirit of the law. Don't do this on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. uh, they got in trouble with Jesus because he healed somebody on the Sabbath day. Again, they, they, they had the law, but they took it further than what it was made to go. And uh, whether you undershoot the mark or overshoot the mark, you still miss the mark. Okay? And uh, to kind of uh, get into this particular study that we're going to do, uh, today. Uh, we're, we're, we're picking up on where we've been. I thank Dr. Claffey for uh, staying in that vein. Amen. Uh, amen. amen. But we're going we're gonna to kind of pick up on some of this. Uh, I want to take a class uh, and go back and look at the importance of the Holy Ghost, what its job is, and who is the Holy Ghost? Who is the Holy Ghost? And you have a lot of different thoughts and ideologies about who he is and what he's supposed to do, but so we, we'll have to even talk about that. But uh, there's one scripture that I want to uh, look at and pick out, and that's in the book of Romans, chapter number 8. And uh, again, this is going to open up uh, maybe a can of worms, depending on how you approach it. It may open up a can of worms. And while you turn it there, I, I want to tell you, I want to uh, share with you why we have so uh, many... Uh, problems when it comes to God and the church having an understanding of God. You do understand that we really don't understand God fully, and we can't. Our, our minds can't comprehend. And so God shows us types and shadows to help us to understand. So even when Moses asked, Lord, show me your glory, he did not see God in his fullness. He said, I'll pass by and let you see my hinder parts. Mm -hmm. Now, in that same book, in previous chapters, the Bible said that he showed his glory to Israel. So they saw a portion of his glory, but Moses understood there's more to this than what you showed me. So he saw more than what they saw. But even though he saw more, he still did not get a chance to see what we see. So, so again, uh, you have to be careful when you are, are looking and judging what somebody is saying. And, and let me give you a, a, a natural example. Uh, and remember, I told you that we only understand a bit about God. 
if you would imagine taking uh, a couple of people and blindfolding them and taking them to the circus and taking them under the big top and the biggest thing in there is the elephant okay and and but all of them are blindfolded and one by one you let them go and and uh, uh, examine the elephant and the first guy he has his blindfold on he goes in and he grabs the elephant by the leg and he touches the elephant's leg mm -hmm. okay and then okay he goes and he sits in his seat he still has his blindfold on then the next guy comes and he comes and he's reaching out, he ends up grabbing the elephant by the tail. And he's running his hand back and forth on the tail. And then another guy comes in and he grabs him uh, by the trunk. And he runs his hand up and down, up and down the trunk. And then another one comes in and he touches the elephant on its side. And he's rubbing his hands back and forth on the side. Okay, and so they all, they all uh, come outside the big top. And they're all sitting around the table. And they're all talking about the elephant and what the elephant was. And uh, they asked one guy, they said, what, what is the elephant like? He said, the elephant, he's like a tree. It's like a big round tree. It's hard to hold. He says, he's like a tree, but it's rough. It's like a rough tree. And the other guy said, no, nah, he's like a rope. You know, it's like a rope. It's, it's, it's a rope. And another guy said, no, 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 no. It's like a, 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 a water hose. It bends like a water hose. Mm -hmm. And another guy said, no, nah, it's big as a wall. It's like a wall. Now, who was right? <laughs> all of them. Oh. Their, their perception. Of they were all right from their perspective, but none of them had the few, the, the, the full view Correct. of what the elephant was. They, they did not, they did not see. They, 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 they were aware of what they were aware of, but that's all that they were aware of. Mm -hmm. And many times we're like that when it comes to the scripture. Uh, if we don't get a chance to look at and factor in all of the scripture. That's why the Bible says precept must be upon precept. And most people don't take time to put precept upon precept. Neither do they take time to put line upon line to go here and to go there. Mm -hmm. They will find one place and they will camp right there. And you cannot do that and get a full understanding of God. Now that doesn't mean where you're at is, is wrong, but that just means that's where you're at. Mm -hmm. And there's more to God than where you are. Uh, one of the funniest uh, programs that I used to enjoy was uh, uh, the Beverly Hillbillies. And uh, one of the main things that would be so funny is uh, Jethro Bodine. And Jethro was proud that he graduated. He was a sixth grade graduate. Okay. Now really he wasn't really that. But he was proud that he was the sixth. And so he knew more than anybody in the house because he's the only one in the house that graduated. Sixth grade. They don't never mention there's a, six other grades that you that you missed out on. Plus, you know, a college. No, no, he graduated sixth grade. And everybody thought, you know, Jeth Jethro's smart. And a lot of times we have a lot of Jethro's that uh, think they know more than anybody else. And maybe they do. But what they don't realize is that there's more to know than what they know. So we have to always learn. And in all our getting, get an understanding. But in there, in the eighth chapter of the book of Romans, this is one of this is a controversial uh, passage. I guess you say Romans got a bunch of controversial stuff, huh? Okay, Romans chapter number eight, and if we will look at verse number uh, nine, Romans eight and nine, and I'm going to be reading from the New King James just for the ease of uh, of understanding. Amen. You know, I learned some about when you're doing recordings. I always wondered why they had a guy in the old movies with this little block and he did like that. Okay, did you did you, did you know why they did that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so some of y'all, do you know why they did that? That clap like that? Just not Well, not not really. What would happen is you might record the audio and the video on two separate uh, uh, lines. I'll put it like that. Mm -hmm. And so what you would have to do is you would have to match those lines up. And what would allow you to match that line up was when you heard that click, it was spike on the video and the audio. It, it was a, on the video, you could see where he did that. On the audio, you could hear where he did that. So when you matched them up, they would run together. They would mm -hmm. run together. So uh, the scripture 
What we have to do is find the scriptures that will allow us to run together. Because you have a peace, I have a peace. But we've got to bring it together so that it's all unified. But let's look there in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse number 9. It says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. He is not his. Now, the, the big uh, controversy is what is having the spirit of Christ. What does that look like? That's a big question. Because if you look at the, if you look at the Bible, there's a I mean there's tons of scripture that says that the just shall live by faith. And then it also now says, now faith is the substance of what things of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. So, now, when we just talk about faith, faith is where we have to start. So, with faith, do we have it first or do we see it first? Do we have it and it's manifested or we are, because it's manifested, we have it? you got to think about that. That's something that you have to think about. Do I have it because it's been manifested or is it manifested because I have it. Now, mm -hmm. what you have to do is find out what the Bible says about that. Before we dive into that, let me just make a few observations. It is not um, unusual in church for somebody to pray for somebody for healing. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell them, claim it by faith. And they will tell them, you're healed. Mm -hmm. Is it, have you heard that? Mm -hmm. They say, you're healed. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you, you coughing, your stomach's still hurting, or your head's still hurt, mm -hmm. but they tell you to claim it by faith. faith. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, is faith progressive? Where we can claim it and have it? Is it like that? Now, there, there is a place where there were some lepers that came to Jesus. And the Bible says, as they went, they were healed. But wait a minute. Were they healed because they were going? Or were they healed because he said so? Which one hap which, which happened first? Yeah. That, now, I'm, just, I'm just putting this out here as a rhetorical question to think about. Mm -hmm. So when did they actually get healed? You have to think about that. Now, if we are imitators of God, the Bible says that he calls those things that be not as though they were. Mm -hmm. And he says, my counsel shall stand and I will do all of my pleasure. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was the lamb slain. So when, wait a minute. So when was Jesus slain? Was he slain at Calvary? When, when, when Pilate and, and Herod and Caiaphas said, Amen, is that when he was slain? Not according to the Bible. According to the Bible, before they ever did what they did, God had already done what he was going to do. Now, I'm just, I'm just trying to lay the, lay the, try to make the bed up before we lay down in it. Is that all right? Go ahead. Okay. But, let, but let's look at this again. In Romans chapter 8, it says... Verse number 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. He is not his. Uh, nowadays, when a woman tells a man, I've got your baby. First thing they want to know is, what did Dana say? Y'all know who Dana is, don't you? DNA. A DNA. Mm -hmm. 
We want to know what the de yeah, that's just that's just a fancy way for saying deoxyribonucleic acid. We want to know what Dana said. What did Dana say? So when we want to find out whether or not somebody is one of his, we gotta find out what does now where where is the what is the D where what is the D uh, DNA? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Okay. When am I his? Before we jump in the Bible, let's, 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 let's keep it in the natural. Is the baby there when you see the head bust through the vaginal canal or is the baby there at conception now that's just something to think about what is the definition of conception and is, the, is, is conception the same thing as the in birth Is that child, the man's child, at the point of conception? And, that, and not before. That's what we're arguing with right now. That's, what, that's what's being argued out in the streets now. Mm -hmm. when, when, is it a, when is it a baby? Is it a baby in the womb or is it a baby when it comes out of the womb? Now, I, I know what God said. I knew you when you were in your mother's womb. Right. So, it's, so that would be before, you, but but that's only God talking, you know. Who can, who can believe it? Yes, sir. You know, the man says on that subject, because we kind of looked it up, that a heartbeat is not detected until way after the fact inside the mother's womb. I think they said, I'm maybe all off on time zone, that it's either... I think three, four weeks, five weeks, or something like that, when the first heartbeat detected. Now, that doesn't mean the heartbeat, like you said, wasn't beating and you just couldn't hear it. Oh, <laughs> now, now, now we're, see, now you're following science. Mm -hmm. Through science. Because you didn't hear it, it doesn't mean it wasn't there. It just means you didn't hear it. What were you going to say? Uh, I mentioned this before, according to the law. If a woman is pregnant, it doesn't say whether they hear a heartbeat or not. If she says she's pregnant and they know she's pregnant, the doctor says she's pregnant, the test says she's pregnant, which could be six weeks, two weeks, whatever, and she is killed, a man goes to trial for two deaths. So oh, yes. they consider that child another human being. They consider that without child? Without them even having come through the bed bath. Oh, yes. Okay, okay but now here's the, here's, here's the problem with me. We're wicked, screwed up, messed up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you hit that woman and she has a child in her, they say you just killed two people. Mm -hmm. But if on the flip side, on the flip side, <laughs> if she decides she won't have an abortion, <laughs> she ain't killed nobody. Crazy. Do you understand how flippant we are? Absolutely. It's kind of it's kind of as flippant as these folk walking around the street. Uh, my body, my choice. But then all of a sudden, when it comes to being vaccinated, they ain't singing that song. Mm -hmm. I think you ought to make everybody do it. Wait, 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 what happened to my body, my choice? Mm -hmm. We can't change the page now. We got to sing the same song. So, so, so again, we have to understand and examine what happened. Okay, now, let's, 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 let's think about this from the natural standpoint before we get into the scriptures. The, 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 the uh, sperm penetrates the egg and there is where life begins. Here's the problem. You and I never see that happen. No, we don't. <laughs> you don't. You don't see it happen. Okay, can it be seen? Yeah, not by you. You, you don't have the uh, proper equipment. You, you're not able to get into the womb and watch as this process happens. They do have videos of that process happening. 
But you, in the natural, in the natural setting that God allows you to be in, you can't see it. Now, what is that sperm represent? That, that is that seed from the man. That sperm represents the Word of God. It is living. Now, when you go to the parable where it talks about it falling on various grounds, you do understand that seed going forth, it does not always lodge in an egg. It does not always fertilize an egg, but it's still going forth. So when you have an individual inside of the church and they are hearing the word of God, that is an opportunity for them to receive the word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, just because you hear and he you're here and hear it does not necessarily mean that you are receiving it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. There has to, your, your heart has to be conditioned to receive the word of God. So now. When that individual receives the word of God and God begins to work on them, that might be when they initially have the spirit of God. I'm just putting it out there. You have to study the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Because there is a, a point of initial conception. But then there is a point of birth. And so we have to make sure that we understand that there's some differences here. And so we're going to look at a bunch of scriptures, and you're going to have to kind of put this, piece this together. Okay, now, I know we, we, uh, we, we're talking about tongues, right? And how all this fits in with tongues. Okay. Remember, we were in the book of Genesis, and God used tongues to do a supernatural manifestation to show that he did this. And he scattered men for the purpose of, of, of uh, sharing the, not sharing the gospel, but being obedient to the gospel, or shall we say being obedient to his word. The gospel is his word. To, for them to be obedient, he scattered them. He said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish. They said, we're going to make us a name. We're going to build us a tower to God. In other words, we ain't doing that. We're going to do what we want to do. And God said, we'll see. And so God does this. But then what God does, he gives us some hints of what he's going to do later. Remember we talked about when you, when you have a mathematical equation, what you do on one side, you have to balance it on the other side of the equation. So if God did something with the language on one side of the equation, it stands the reason that he's going to have to do something on the other side with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, yes, sir. The question that I raised, I guess, in my mind that somebody might ask, of course, I, I know I'm saved. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost speaking tongues, and it's done deal kind of thing. But when you want to dig, some things when you dig deep it scares Christians because they, they they don't want to touch it because what they've been taught the kind of thing. Yeah. My question is, it's good to talk about is that disciple that went up in the upper room and he received the Holy Ghost through the advent of speaking in tongues. Did he have the Spirit before that actually happened? You know, and if he did explain what that spirit was around him or in him, or was just around him and never was in him until that point of, of, of contact of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Okay. That's a good thing to kind of discuss. Okay, so, so did he, did the, the, the question is, did he speak as a result of having it, or does he have it because he spoke? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is the wind blowing because you hear it? Or is it blowing because it's blowing? Tick tock, tick tock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so again, this is why we have to examine the scripture and see what, what are the scripture examples? What does it look like? Okay, now, let's, let's, let's think for a moment. And uh, when we talk about the, the, the Holy Ghost, he does give us some signs, some signals, and some, because remember, in the New Testament, they really hadn't really seen the power of God. Mm -hmm. and, and really, not like it was manifest in the Old Testament. They didn't see it, but that was only a shadow of what God was going to do. So, let's look at, if you don't mind, let's look at a couple of scriptures and see where we can go with this. Um, you remember in um, the third chapter, of Matthew, 
Anybody remember the third chapter of Matthew, verse number 11? This is where John first discusses the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about John the Baptist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 3 and 11 of Matthew. Yeah. What does he say? I indeed baptize you with the water unto repentance. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me, he that cometh after me, is mightier, than, is mightier I, than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. And with fire. And with fire. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, do they know what the Holy Ghost is at this particular time? No. 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 Do you think they know what fire is? No. Yes. yes. Well, yes. they know what fire is. Oh, fire, yeah. But you don't, you don't know what the Holy Ghost is, but you know what fire is. Mm -hmm. So, the reason that he has the fire is because he can use the fire to introduce the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After the fire introduces the Holy Ghost, there's no need for the fire no more. Because the Holy Ghost is the fire. Mm -hmm. there's, uh, yeah, there's, no, there's no, no need for that. Okay, now, so what happens, and we're going to go forward and backwards. What happens on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2? Turn there real quick. And beginning at verse number one, Acts chapter two, verse number one. Now I want you to remember back in the Old Testament in Genesis, they were all in one place. They were all with one accord. Okay, so so this is this is now. Here's one of the problems that we have in church. We can't get everybody on one accord. You can't get, Lord, please, uh, one place. Oh, oh, cancel that. One place and on one accord? That's a miracle in itself. Okay, what does it say? Acts 2 and 1. Go right there. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now, this Pentecost is a celebration of God giving the word. Okay. I'm talking about from the Old Testament. He gave the word mm -hmm. at Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all. They were all with one accord. With one accord. In one place. In one place. Now, 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 this is why teaching is so important in the church, because teaching is what brings us on one accord. Mm -hmm. We may come to different <laughs> understandings, but prayerfully with the, with right teaching, it'll all bring us on one accord, at least on one, one or two items that bring us on one accord. Okay, go ahead, read on. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Now, wait a minute. What time did it come? Not on your time. That means suddenly. That means you didn't know when it was coming. It just came suddenly. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when things are on God's time clock, you know one thing you got to get used to doing? Wait, wait, wait. Because it's on your, it's on his time. Yes. It's not on your time. Yes. And see, a lot of times that's the problem with us. If it don't have my, listen, I'm gonna tell you something. We, if we in church, if it don't happen by one o'clock, <laughs> people start getting up leaving. By one thirty, I, you, I can sing all by myself. Yeah. I can sing that song all by myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> people put one finger up. I guess they say you're gonna be one short. That's me. <laughs> they were sudden. No, I mean suddenly there came a sound. Okay, now mm -hmm. now we have this sound thing. We have an example of the Spirit of God coming and there being a sound. He says, as a rushing mighty wind. He didn't say it was a, a, a rushing mighty wind. He said, as a mm -hmm. as a rushing mighty wind. Yes. And it said it filled all the house where they were sure. sitting. How, how'd that do that? Because they were all on the court. Mm -hmm. Then what does it say after that? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. Like as a fire. Like as a fire. Now, there we go. Here's this fire again. Mm -hmm. 
Now the fire is going to disappear, but there's something else going to be left. Read on. And it's set upon each of them. And it's set up on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, it doesn't say, and they all got the Holy Ghost. It says they were all filled. There's, there's something different. There's a difference between getting something and being filled with something. I got a few coins in my pocket, but they ain't filled. My pockets are not filled. I do have a few coins, but they're not filled. Now, if you'd like to see them filled, we can take a moment out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Work on that. So with, with what you said just a few minutes ago, you're speaking as though it's already there. Ooh. It's just not filled to the room. Now, you keep that. You keep that. She said, oh, I wish we could write this stuff down. If we had a big blackboard, we would write this down. Write this down in the blackboard of your mind. Okay? Write this down in the blackboard of your mind. Where are we at? What scripture did I call? Okay. And they were all filled? Mm -hmm. Okay. They were all, they were all filled. Read, please. What does it say? Okay. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Other tongues. Other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, here's an observation we need to make. They're speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives them utterance. That is one type of tongues. There are other types of tongues. You can't run them all together. Mm -hmm. Okay? When the Bible says to all speak with tongues, it ain't talking about this one right here. This is a different tongue. Okay. Now we got. Let's look at some. Let's look at some other scriptures. Um, now remember, up until the Book of Acts, we are in the Old Testament. When you're in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that's all Old Testament. Okay. And what God would do is He would give a verbal uh, something, a, a verbal sign. And let's go there in Saint Luke chapter number one, which is in the New, which is in the uh, Old Testament, right? Mm -hmm. St. Luke chapter number one. Yes, I know. We, we have it categorized in the New Testament. We do. Okay. But remember, why do we call it a testament? The testaments, the divide for the testaments is the death of the testator. Jesus is still alive. Okay, so we haven't had the death of the death of the testator, so the New Testament hasn't been instituted. Now things have been recorded, okay, but until the death of the testator, you don't officially have it. Are, are, you, are you with me? Amen. That's like when Christ said in the New Testament, you pay tithes as you ought. People missed that little line that he threw in there. Yeah. But these other things you miss. In other words, you know, I, 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 the task is not wrong. Right. You pay it's that. You, you got you got an A plus in that. Yeah. But we're gonna move on from that. Now this subject, y'all messing up. So that that let us know they were still paying tithes, as we call, oh, and New Testament around the edge. <laughs> they, were still, they were still doing it. No, don't say yeah. it too loud. <laughs> yeah. I told you, you get deep platform. Okay. Now, let's, let's look there in uh, St. Luke chapter number 1, and uh, let's look at verse number 39, because that'll start us with the context of this. St. Luke 1 and 39, it says, Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary. Now, she's hearing the greeting of Mary. She's hearing the word. That the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was what? Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Now, let's see if anything happens because she's filled with it. Then, she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are, are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. So she's speaking prophetically. Mm -hmm. The Bible says 
that the Spirit was going to come up on them. Now we'll go, when we get to the Old Testament, you'll see that. And they will prophesy. This is that prophecy that Elizabeth is doing. She's, doing, she's prophesying right now. Okay. Now, not only uh, does she prophesy, but we're going to see it also happen to her husband. And uh, let's, let's pick that up uh, in this same chapter. And uh, let's see here. I, I want to give you all this text in context. I mean, you know, we could shorten it, but I, I want you to. Let's go to verse 57. So it's text in context, so you're just not picking up somewhere. It says, Now Elizabeth, full time came for her to be delivered. And she brought forth a son. I remember uh, Liz couldn't have no kids because she was old. Mm -hmm. But see, God is doing some miraculous things. Yes, he, is. he did something with Mary because she's a virgin having a child. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to take an old lady that ain't, ain't never had a child. She's going to have a child. Yes. Isn't that something? Man, he's no respecter of person. It says, uh, when her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord has shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. <clears throat> You know, it's, it's something else. I want y'all to notice this. It is something how things happen when people are praising and rejoicing with God. Yes, yes, yes. See, when we're on, when we're in, on one accord, mm -hmm. if I'm rejoicing, you rejoice. Mm -hmm. We all are rejoicing. We all that's on we on one place. One. How hard is it? You ever been in church? People, everybody. It looks like every, half the church is rejoicing. The other half have their arms folded. <laughs> Yeah. You feel like you stopping. You feel like stopping service just for a minute. And say, listen, you, would y'all leave? Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't in this. Evidently, y'all ain't in this. Would y'all leave? Cause y'all, you, you know, y'all holding us back. You got your feet down. We want this go yeah. part to go. We going down the hill, but your feet are down. You slowing us up. So leave. What you'll find out on the day of Pentecost, everybody that had watched him ascend into heaven did not stay. They weren't there. Some left. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, look what it says. Verse 59, so it was on the eighth day uh, that they came to circumcise the child, and, uh, and they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. His mother answered and said, no, <laughs> he shall be called John. But they said to her, there ain't nobody among your relatives who is called John by that name. Ain't nobody. So, they made signs to his father what he would have him call. And he asked for a writing tablet. And he wrote, saying his name, John. <laughs> so they all marveled and watched. Immediately, his mouth was open and his what? Tongue loosened. And he spoke and praised God. He did what? He spoke. And he praised God. He spoke and he praised God. We'll keep on reading. Uh, then fear came on all who dwelt around them. And all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of, of Judea. Now why did fear come on them? Watch. And all those who heard them kept them in their hearts saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Verse 30, uh, 67 is what I want. Now his father Zacharias was what? Filled with the Holy, Filled with the Holy Ghost. And he did what? And he prophesied saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Man, and as he spoke by the mouth of the of his holy prophets, so so he prophesies. Mm -hmm. He's he's prophesying. So this is something that hmm. now this in Old Testament is prophecy. But, but but if you remember in Acts chapter two, when they asked Peter, "What is this?" Peter said, "This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel." Now, according to, to that, according to Acts 2, the first couple of verses, they're speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Joel doesn't say anything about speaking in tongues, does he? Mm -hmm. Joel 2 and 28. Turn there real quick and see what Joel says. It's going to pass the last days. I will pour out the tears. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy on the old man's dreams. 
Let me know. Joe, two and twenty-eight. Y'all got it. Let me know. Cool. He's he, he's cheating because he knows it. <laughs> hey, well. You know, when you've been preaching since nineteen fifty-eight, fifty twelve. Me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, boy. When you've been preaching that long, you know some of those scriptures like that. What does it say? About 65. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. Afterward. Afterward. That I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons. Your and, sons. and your females. Your daughters. And your daughters. Not just sons only. And the women got to be quiet. Your daughters. Your daughters. Shall prophesy. Now wait a minute. He says that they're prophesying. But when you look at Peter says that. that Peter says what. That's speaking in tongues. He says that is that which was spoken of. By the prophet Joel. Now. What is all of this? What What is this? Well let's. Let's look. And let's see. Let's go to. Uh. Isaiah, chapter number 28. And let's look at that. Isaiah, chapter 28. Are you there? Are you getting there? Isaiah, chapter 28. Now, let's... Now, everybody's not going to understand this. This is, why, this, is why, this is why Bible study is important. And right here, he's telling you that Bible study is important. What does he say? 28 and 9, what does he say? And 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he made to understand And whom, knowledge? now listen to this. Who shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall, and whom he, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Who? Them that are weaned from the milk. Those that are weaned from the milk. And drawn from the breast. And drawn from the breast. These are not, these are not uh, infants. People who are infants in the word. Those are, these are people who are applying themselves. Yes. Who are studying. The Bible says that he is a reward of those that diligently seek him. Nowadays you can't find people that want to diligently seek him. We want to come to church and sing. We want to come to church and shout. We want to come to church and testify. I mean, testify. I'm sorry, testify. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to diligently seek Him in His Word. Who shall He teach knowledge, and who shall He make to understand doctrine? Those that are what weaned off the milk and drawn from the ground. Weaned from weaned and drawn. Mm -hmm. Now, what does He say? Listen, for precept must be upon precept. So. What, we, what we're doing in this study is we're building precepts up on precept. We're not running on one scripture. We're building precepts on precept. What does it say? Precept upon precept. Then, then we're adding some more precepts upon those precepts. Line upon line. Then we're adding line upon line. Line upon line. Some more lines upon line. Here a little. We're going here. Then we go here. We're here now. Then we went, we went from the old to the new, from new to here a little. And there a little. And there a little. Now listen. He said, after you get this, you're going to understand what? For with stammering lips and another tongue. Okay, now let's stop. For with stammering lips. Anybody ever had stammering lips? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if you yeah. haven't, wait till December come. Anybody been cold in cold water? Yes. Man, <laughs> when you first jump into a swimming pool? Uh -huh. Oh, man. Now, somebody said, what's stammering lips? That's stammering lips. Mm -hmm. That is stammering lips. Now, there is a stammering lips. Uh, stammering lips are always the effect of something on the outside working on something on the inside. Okay. So, stammering lips is an outside influence working on the inside of you. So, the Bible says with stammering, it doesn't say with cold water either. It says with stammering lips and then you... And another tongue. So it moves from being a stammering lip to another tongue. Will he speak to this people? Will he speak to this people? Now listen, what does he say? To whom he said. To whom he said. This is the rest. This is the rest. Wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And what and else? This is the refreshing. 
And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. Yet they would, oh, I don't want to hear none of that mess. Yet they would not hear. Now, wait a minute. What did Jesus say after he got here? Turn to Matthew chapter 11 and verse number 28. Now, don't, don't, don't move your finger from where you were. But if you have, don't worry, you can go back to it. You found it one time, you'll find it again. Eleven and twenty-eight. Come unto me. Now wait a minute. You have to come. You have to come. Come unto me. All ye. All ye. That labor and are heavy laden. That labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. What does it say? Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. And learn of me. Now stop. What he just said is the same thing that you just read. Let, let's go back and look at it. What you just read says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Now, and that word rest. Now listen to this. When you go back to Matthew, mm -hmm. he says, take my yoke up on you. Learn of me. Mm -hmm. Learn of me. So that means you can't be the one that's sucking milk. Mm -hmm. He said, because if you learn of me, you find out that my burdens are my yoke is easy, my burdens are light. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I shall give you what? Rest. rest. Now, what is the rest? Does anybody know what is the rest? This is Bible study. Does anybody know what is the rest? All you got to do is go back to Isaiah, Relief. chapter number 28. He says, with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak unto this people? He calls it the rest of and the refreshing. Mm -hmm. So this, this is what the Bible means when it says precept upon precept, line upon line. Do, do, are you with me? Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, now, we're getting ready to run out of time. But I, I but some things that I need to, I definitely need to show you about this. He says, I will give you rest. Now, it also said in uh, back in Isaiah that this is the refreshing. Correct? Mm -hmm. yes. that, so he wants to give us rest. He wants to give us uh, refreshing. What he wants to give us is uh, another uh, uh, unctioning of his spirit. Okay, y'all remember, y'all remember uh, uh, when we would look at uh, cartoons, uh, so y'all old enough to remember this. This was a young group, they wouldn't know what I was talking about. Y'all remember when we used to watch Underdog? Mm -hmm. And and he would he would try to save his girlfriend. Y'all remember? Y'all what was it? What was it? What was it? Yeah. Sweet Polly. Sweet Polly purebred. Yeah. <laughs> How could y'all not remember? Sweet Polly. And so what would happen is is that he's trying to save Sweet Polly and and riffraff. Y'all remember riffraff, right? Yes. Yeah. Is is beating the snot out of him, right? Y'all do remember this, don't you? Yeah. Oh my! I don't know. Who are you looking at? Mighty Mouse. I was looking. Uh, evidently, that wasn't one of my favorites because I didn't watch it. Okay, go back and look at it. Okay. But what would happen is he would have with him something in his energy ring. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he would, if he could get that bad boy open, and if he could get that pill in his mouth, yes. All of a sudden. Something with power. power would emanate from him. But he had to get that energy pill yeah. that he carried with him mm -hmm. in him. Well, y'all ain't with me. Y'all yeah, yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, let me let's look, let's look at St. John. They don't they don't think I know what I'm talking about here. Said, what is he talking about? I'm talking about something being with you mm -hmm. and going yes. from being with you mm -hmm. to being in you. Thank you. I hope y'all
y'all don't mind this. Let's look, look, let's look here in uh, St. John chapter number 14. Since we don't have super uh, time limits, I, I'm going to go through this because I, I think it's important. For, first of all, let's start at the very beginning of this. Okay. Well, the start at the beginning of it is not really just chapter 14. You do realize that. You don't start out the chapter saying let. Yeah. Okay. So you really have to read chapter 13. But we'll, we'll start at 14. That's where everybody likes to be. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Now, he, this ain't the last time he's going to say this. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in, wait a minute, you do what? You believe or you have faith in God? Yes. That's what he's talking about. Yes. Believe also in me. In my Father's house or many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place where, for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that ye may be also. Now, wait a minute. He says to receive you unto myself. Okay. Now what you're going to find out is there is you receiving him receiving you and you receiving him. Y'all yes. got to receive each other. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Y'all have to there's a receiving of each other. You have to receive each other. It's like when we have the wedding ceremony and, and she gives him a ring and he gives her a ring. They both receive rings. Okay look what it says. Uh Verse 4, and where I go, you know, and the way I know. Mm -hmm. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way. Yes. He's trying to get you something. He tells he tell me, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. If, I had, if, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him. And have seen him. This is really interesting right here. Mm -hmm. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it's sufficient for us. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been with you so long? Wait a minute. He's been with them? He's been with them. Mm -hmm. I've been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Remember the Bible in Hebrew says that Jesus is the express image. Mm -hmm. He's the express image of God. So if you want to see what God looks like, Jesus is not another God. Jesus is the same God expressed to you in a form that you cannot see. Identify with. Identify with. Otherwise you couldn't identify with. He'd be too much. It says, do you not believe that I am in the Father, the Father in me, the words that I speak to you? I do not speak of myself or of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. Now, see, this is why God wants to dwell in us, yes. so that he can do the work. He said, believe me that I am in the Father, the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works of themselves. More surely I say to you, who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Now, and what, now listen to this, and whatever you ask in my Father, ask, ask in, my, in my name, that I will do. You yes. ask in my name that I will do. Who's going to do it? He said, I will. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, if you ask anything in my name, who will do it? I will do it. Mm -hmm. I, if you love me, Keep my commandments. Whose commandments are they? His. I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter or helper that he may uh, abide with you forever. Forever. Now, wait a minute. Who is this? Verse 17 is going to tell you. Now, Jesus, remember Jesus, I think in verse number 6, said, I am the way and the truth. I'm the truth, right? I'm the life. Look what he says in 17. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither seeth him nor know him, but you know him, for he what? Dwells with you and will be in you. In you. So he's, he's trying to say, he says, John says the same thing over again, but he says it several different ways. God is with you, but he says, I want to be in you. Now, for the sake of time, we'll have to pick some of this up later on, but before we do, Let's not just close out right now. Let's go to St. John chapter number 7. And verse number 37, because I didn't, I didn't want to leave you feeling some kind of way. Amen. 
37 and 37. All right, everybody there? Amen. All right. On that, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, now wait a minute. He said something similar in Matthew, remember? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Mm -hmm. See, he keeps inviting you. He says, if anyone, what? Thirst. Thirst. Let him come unto me and drink. and drink. Now, wait a minute. This is telling you something has to go in you. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to drink. You have to receive. You have to receive the word. Mm -hmm. He says, he who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly or out of his heart yes. shall flow what? Rivers of water. Of living water. Now let me ask you a question. How can it flow out if it ain't in? Let me. How can it flow out if it ain't in? When did it get in? When you drank. When you were thirsty and when you drank. When you believed and when you received. Could that be when you first have the Spirit of God? But we can't stop there. Because it says out of your belly, what you receive is going to swell up in your belly. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh y'all, now, now listen to this. Yes. Listen, listen. When that man impregnates that woman and that, that, that sperm goes into that egg, we ain't expecting egg and sperm to come out, no. are we? No. no, we're expecting something to swell up. And it will, and while it's swelling, it will have an effect on that woman. Have you seen these women when they get pregnant? My God, they go through a metamorphosis. I mean, even the most beautiful woman, I mean, her ankles get swelled. You know, she used, you know how they used to walk one foot in front of the other? Oh, God, they barely walk. And they, I mean, they look like weevils wobbling, right? They nose start spreading all over their face. My God. They get up. They get this unsatisfiable appetite. They eat everything that's not nailed down. Mm -hmm. See what he say? He that hungers and thirsts mm -hmm. after righteousness shall be what? Filled. Filled. Feel. So you drink this water until you get filled, and then once you get filled, you can't handle no more. And out of your belly begins to flow a river. Of living water. Now let's see what it says after that. 737, he says, uh, On that last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He who believes on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart or out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Listen to what it says. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would or should receive. Now, did they receive it right then? For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So, our job is to make sure that on the inside that Jesus is glorified. That he turns all of it is turned over to him. Let me, can I show you something else? Did I tell you that was going to be the last scripture? <laughs> okay, good. I don't want y'all to be able to call me a liar. He had it. You know, but that, that strip is a good example of showing people that the, no, the disciples were followers of Christ. They're followers. Yes. You know, but they have not yet got the genuine indwelling they, Holy Ghost they, hadn't have been given yet. Yeah, they, they got. The, I'm with you, Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But he's with them. He's with. He's be be. I'm with you all the way. He got, they got to with you, but now they want. He want to. He wants to. He don't want to be with. He wants to be in. in. Yes. And that was the day of Pentecost when it finally, finally officially became in. This, fully, see, fully you know, in. It's like, oh, you know, just like, this is adult class. This is adult class, right? Okay, okay, this is adult class. That's like when you stand up here and you make that, that vow commitment and, and y'all kiss each other and the guy says, I now pronounce you 
man and wife. And everybody said, now you may kiss the man, you kiss the bride, and you say, that's it. He said, oh, no, we're just getting started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, the real show comes on later on. Mm -hmm. When that bad boy is this consummation, right? Yes. That's a more, see, that kiss up here, that's an intimate kiss, right? People say, oh, they shouldn't kiss like that. Well, don't watch if you don't want to they hey. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's their time. That's their moment. Yes. They invited you to share. If you don't yes. want to share, turn your back on what you don't want to yes. share with. Because right. there's going to come another part that you ain't sharing with. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Oh, you understand? And so that's when, they're, that's when they are. But see, they're, they're man and wife. As soon as he says, as soon as I say, I pronounce you man. Y'all man and wife right there. Wait, you ain't man and wife because you kiss. You man and wife because I, the word says you are. Mm -hmm. yes. On paper. Yeah. Everything else after that is a manifestation of what I said. Yes. Are, are y'all with yeah. me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Where are we at? We're in St. John chapter 3, right? Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Watch this. We have to come back and, 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 and look at this. St. John chapter number 3. I want to I want to I want to close out with this because when we come back we will look at it in more detail. But I think it's a good scripture to close out on. Three and eight says, and I'm going to have to quote this because the New King James says it a little bit different. I'll come back to it. It says, "The wind bloweth where it lists. Thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell from whence it come or whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit." Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse number 39, For the promise unto you, to them that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Remember, he says, this is the refreshing. Yes. This is the rest. Yes. So all of this is still part of a process. Now, I know people say, well, whoo, I, I did that, I believed. I done, I, done, I done spoke, so I'm saved. Yes and no. 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 Because if all, after all that, you still live like hell, mm -hmm. you still go to hell. Mm -hmm. Salvation is progressive. And mm -hmm. you got to understand that. Mm -hmm. Now, we can argue over when you think a person is saved, just like they do in downtown, arguing when, when a baby is actually a baby. When is it actually, when, when do we say it's life? They're going to be all over the place. Some people say, hey, after the third, first trimester, after the, no, well. Mm -hmm. And the strange thing about it is, they have so-called science. It keeps changing. But see, God's word never changes. Amen. It is what it is. And I'll say this, and I'm going to close my book, that way y'all think I'm finished. The Bible says, by faith are you saved. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So just like you claim your healing mm -hmm. by faith, mm -hmm. and you wait for the manifestation of it, mm -hmm. claim your salvation by faith and look for the manifestation of it. Yes. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Because none of us are truly saved until we see him as he is. Mm -hmm. Because then we are like him. Then we are the accepted because mm -hmm. he's the accepted. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go into this a little bit further because there's a whole lot that we're going to say. We're just at the beginning of this because this, this tongues thing is, is, is deep. Yeah. So this is like a continuation. This is a continuation. Amen. Yeah, this is a continuation. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, a lot of people and some pastors have said that. Um, when you have, when you consume your relationship, yes, you marry, that's the official wedding. Okay. Okay. That you are joined and you are one. Uh -huh. Okay. Now the woman at the well supposedly had five exes. Mm -hmm. Does that mean every person that you have sex with, you are wed to them? Because the last one who said yes, and the man you're living with now is not your husband. So that kind of tripled in my mind so that you're not married to every single person you have sex with. Oh boy, you opened up a can yes, right there. Big can. Yes, but no, okay, let me let me let me say that. Remember, uh, there's one place he talks about uh, the fornicating with the world that you 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 become like a bride with the world. Yes. 
you have what it, what it is is that you have shared marital things. It is an unauthorized yes. marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is an unauthorized marriage. Yes, it is. So to a degree, it is, it is, it is marriage, it is. Okay. but it's unauthorized. Mm -hmm. So now, now here, here's, here's the deal. When you get married to the next person, mm -hmm. that kind of broke some of the marriage with the last person. Okay. Because that, that makes sense to me because when a person commits adultery, the covenant is broken. It's broken. Okay. So um, now, now, but now, if you don't, I mean, so a hooker doesn't really have a covenant with every single person. That's what I'm saying. Does, is it a mental thing? She, well, she, a physical she, thing? She, she has a makes it a covenant? She has a, she has a, she's had a covenant with everybody. She had, but she's broke a covenant with everybody. Every, okay. She done had a deal with everybody and broke a deal with everybody. Okay. Now, remember when the, uh, I think it's in the fifth chapter of, uh, of St. Uh, Matthew, uh, we talked about this woman that has several husbands. They were brothers and who's, 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 yeah, who's husband? husband. Okay. Who's going to be your husband in heaven? Yeah, who's going to be the husband? Now, the only husband that she really has is the last one. Mm -hmm. But even in heaven, she ain't going to be that. Mm -hmm. no, but he no. does recognize the last one is the husband. Now, everybody knew her, but the last one is the one that's her husband. Mm -hmm. but, but one of the signs of that relationship was that coming together like that. So, and there's a lot of side Bible stuff as you get into all of this. That are really interesting. Now, now remember about this, and I, I probably shouldn't go this far, but I'm, I'm here, so I might as well be there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people don't understand this thing called stammering lips. People think that's a this the st stammering lips, the speaking in tongues things, is a Pentecostal church, apostolic church thing. It is not. It happened in the Methodist Church. That's where it started, here, in the Methodist Church. Here, when I say started, that we have record of. But this same thing was in the Baptist Church. They called it the Mourner's Bench. The what? The Mourner's Bench. The Mourner's They would say, yeah, you sit on the Mourner's Bench until something happened to you. Okay. Uh-huh, didn't know about that, did you? The old Mourner's Bench, did you heard about the Mourner's Bench? Yeah. Oh, Kim, you came up in the Baptist church. You didn't hear about the morning. So, so they, 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 they had moved the morning's bench out by the time you came. <laughs> <laughs> and what was, who, who went to the morning's morning Whenever you got, so any, any time you got saved, when somebody came in and got saved, oh, okay. after they got baptized, the first place they go to the is to the morning's bench. And they was waiting for the Spirit of God to come by and do something. Yes. Right. So people make want this want people to think that this happened in just this type of church. It did not. It did not. But what happens is over time we started moving God out in different aspects mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in all of our church. We start moving God out. <laughs> yeah, he, we was inviting him to our service. It wasn't his. It was our mm -hmm. service now. Mm -hmm. But you had a morning's fish now. Now, when you, when, you, when you talk about somebody having stammering lips, it's like when you teach a baby. Right now, my, my and that's why I'm going to leave here in a little bit, my granddaughter is at, at my house. And I get to talking to her, and she starts, me, 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 you know, and I'm trying, you know, her mother is trying to get her to say, Mom, Mom, Mom. And I'm just saying, cramps. 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 Now, how is she going to say that? She's going to say what she hears. Mm -hmm. Now, initially, when she says, she's not going to be able to say mother. She's not going to be able to say father. She's not going to be able to say cramps. She's going to say, but she's going to hear it. But she's going to say something close to that. And she's going to keep on saying it. And she's going to keep on saying it. And one day she's going to say, Gramps! Mm -hmm. So, when you have these stammering lips, what you're doing is you're opening yourself up to listen to what God is saying. Yes. 
And when it starts coming, you don't stop it. You keep it on. And God perfects yes. that yes. language that you're yes. speaking. <laughs> but a lot of people will cut it off because they, you know, I'll tell y'all this and I'll be through. I'm, I'm, let me close my book up. I had two open that way I can close two. Uh, I had invited this lady to come to church. And uh, I was going to a church over on Michigan. And uh, uh, she said, well, I don't, I don't know if I want to come to church. I said, why? She said, something might happen to, to me. <laughs> and I said, ain't that going to happen to you? I said, no, I said ain't no, nobody's going to bother you. She said, no, I know how the people are. They swoop down on you, and they'll drag you up to the altar, and they'll have you down. She said, I saw them one time. They had somebody. I said, I promise you, ain't nobody going to mess with you. And so we, we have a church service, and uh, I invite her as my guest, and I'm serving on the pulpit. And we having a good time. The church is having a good time. And all of a sudden, I see her go like this. She started rocking. And I'm like, I'm looking. And I, you know, she, and she gets up and she, she runs out to church. I mean, she runs out to church. And so she's my guest. I'm thinking, what done happened? You know, she's sick. You know, because she's got a hand over her mouth. I think she's sick. So I get up and I walk, uh, run outside behind her. And one of the sisters come and I say, hey, are you okay? She said, uh, yes, yeah. I said, well, what'd you leave for? She said, something was happening to me. And I said, well, what was happening to me? She said, I didn't want to disturb the service. She said, but something was coming out of my mouth. She said, my lips got to moving. And she said, I didn't know what was going on. She said, I didn't want to disturb service. I told her, I said, you ain't disturbing service. I said, come on, back in there. I said, somebody else might do that too. But she well, didn't know what to expect. Yeah. No. She didn't. She didn't. But she said, she said, my lips got to move. And she said, I was, I was singing the song, and all of a sudden my lips started moving. I couldn't. She said, I didn't know what was going on. She said, I tried to stop it. She said, I couldn't, so I ran out. Wow. She came on back in, and it started up again. And this time she stayed there, and it finished out. Amen. And she said, ooh, that was something. She said, <laughs> she said ooh, ooh, that was something. She brought somebody with them next week. With next week, next week she brought somebody with them next week. Now I didn't happen to them. She said, "It might happen to you. I don't know." But again, a lot of times it's the environment. One place, one accord, and then sometimes when God can't change the people around you, He will change the people around you. Yes. Yes. All right. Does anybody have any questions that are not too complicated? Good teacher. Praise the Lord. We'll go a little bit further. I want to thank Dr. Claffey for doing such an excellent job. Amen. I, Amen. I turned on the bed. I saw you. I saw you on there. Mm -hmm. I saw you teaching, and uh, I got to listen to you. And I said to myself, Dr. Claffey, don't teach so hard. Don't teach so hard. I said, they already got a pastor. Don't teach so hard. But he did a did a great job. I want to I want to commend him on that. And I want to say I thank God that that that. Those that we have left to do teachings have done an excellent job.